Hey, Reggie Rivers here, founder and president of the Gala Team, Benefit Auctioneers. We've been doing benefit auctions for quite a while, and I wanted to give you an update on what's happening with the coronavirus and the status of benefit auction events. And so when this first started, we recognized immediately that there was going to be a need to go virtual. And so we created the Virtual Gala Team. You can learn more about us at virtualgalateam.com. But the reason we did is because we realized that something is happening that is going to transform this industry, the nonprofit fundraising industry, and it could transform it for a long time. If you take a look at the events that were on the calendar in March and April and May, June, July, August, through the end of the year, there's all these events that are on the calendar. Well, when word of the coronavirus and its severity started to arrive in March, some of those events went to look for shelter in a future month to wait out the storm. So some of the March events ran into June and some ran into September. A couple weren't able to get out of the way because the notice was a little bit too late. So they got swallowed up by the coronavirus. They had to cancel and just forfeit the money that they were going to raise. Some of the April events sprinted into June and others went into September, but some couldn't get out of the way of the coronavirus and had to cancel for this year. So now May sees what's coming and everyone tries to scatter out of May into later months in the year and they're hoping that that's going to be enough. But here we are. Today is April 3rd that I'm recording this. We're in the beginning of April and already it's looking like the June events are in danger. So the June events all scurry to later in the year. The coronavirus is going to wipe out most of that month. And then what? Does everybody feel safe that if they get into the fall, that they'll be okay, that the coronavirus will be gone by then. What if the coronavirus eats up the remainder of this year, that there are no fundraising galas this year, that there doesn't become a time in 2020 when it's safe for groups of people to gather get together, that we're going to be doing this social distancing for a long time. And so the initial reaction to postpone is a logical first step. Running away from a dangerous wave is a smart thing to do. We don't know how big the wave is going to be. We don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know how far it's going to extend inward. And so running away from it is a good strategy. It gets you a little bit of distance so that you can look back and see what's going on. But now as we look back on what's happening with the coronavirus, I think it's becoming more and more clear that what's required now is not time just shifting our strategy and saying we're going to postpone until a future time What's required now is a different approach to the fundraising in the first place. So social distancing doesn't necessarily bring us back faster, right? We're all doing this social distancing right now because it's the smart thing to do. It's the way the epidemiologists say that this is the way you battle a, a virus like this. You have to do social distancing because too many people will die if you don't do it. Every time on the news you turn on, they're always talking about lowering the peak. If we don't do anything and we don't do social distancing, the number of people who get this virus is much higher and the number of people who die from it is much higher because the peak comes higher and it comes much sooner and it overwhelms our healthcare system. So many people who could have been treated and cured if they had, had access to healthcare will die needlessly because they don't have access. So we all have to be part of this. We all have to do it for our grandparents. We have to do it for people who have uh, compromised immune systems. We have to do it for anybody who's vulnerable for any way. We all have to be disciplined about this social distancing. But social distancing isn't necessarily going to reduce the number of people who get the virus. It's just going to change the timing and try to keep the peak below the capacity of our healthcare system so that when you get this virus, you can go get treatment at a hospital and they can treat you and you live because you got treatment and you didn't die simply because you didn't have access to treatment. So as we look at this from the perspective of gala fundraise, fundraising, social distancing is going to be with us for quite a while. It's hard to imagine that it's not going to still be a practice in the fall. It's hard to imagine that it's not going to be a practice that carries all the way through this calendar year. I just saw an article the other day, the NFL is saying that they are going to have their games as scheduled. That's their plan. But obviously they're already thinking about, well, what if we can't hold our games as scheduled? What would we do then? And so what are you telling your donors right now? 
You have donors, some of whom were planning to come to your gala, and you're telling them, you know what, we've postponed, and so hold on, we'll get back to you when we've worked out a plan. Just hold on, we, we'll tell you when we've got a date and a time when we can receive your donations, because we can't, you know, don't call us right now. We don't need your money right now. We'll get your money when we finally figure out what our plan is going to be. So just hold on, and we'll get back to you when we're ready for you to make donations to us. Is this really what we want to be telling our donors? Do we really want to say, well, we're postponing. I know you're planning to support us, but just hold on and we'll let you know when we need your help. You need their help right now. And we should tell them that we need their help right now. And the time to hold a virtual gala is right now. If you think about what's happening in America, the number of people who are jobless, the unemployed list, there's never been a better time to be unemployed than right now because you have a lot of company. You, there's no stigma to it. Everyone knows this isn't your fault. You were a victim of this like so many other people. You have a lot of company. The government has just passed a $2 trillion aid bill to help the unemployed. They're probably going to pass trillions more to continue to help the unemployed. So if you had to be unemployed, now is the time to do it when everyone is going through it. If you can't pay your rent, now is the time to not be able to pay your rent because everyone is going through that same thing. Congress has said there can be no evictions right now. There can be no late fees assessed. Now is the time because everyone is going through it. If you can't pay your mortgage, now is the time because you can call your mortgage company and say, because of the coronavirus, we can't afford to pay our mortgage. And your mortgage company will give you forbearance and say, yeah, for the next two or three months, you don't need to make a mortgage payment until we get through this. Now is the time because everyone is going through the same thing together. And all the nonprofits right now is the best time because all nonprofits are suffering from the same challenges. All nonprofits are thinking about going virtual and now is the best time to do it when everyone is dealing with this right now. Now, millions have been laid off, but millions more are working from home. Millions more are still collecting their income. Millions more are not financially in trouble. They are just working from home. And those are the people who are your donors, your larger donors at least. And those people want to support you. Right now, they're in the comfort of their own homes. They know that they've got their immediate needs covered, but they're worried about the homeless. They're worried about the sick. They're worried about the unemployed. They're worried about the people who can't pay their rent under normal circumstances. They're worried about the people who are on the way to eviction from their homes because they can't pay their mortgages under normal circumstances. They are worried and they want to know, what can we do to help? And the word that they're getting from their nonprofits is just hold on, hold on, we're postponing, we're going to figure out what we can do, and we'll find a way for you to get involved. I say, let's say yes to your donors, say yes to support, say yes to doing a virtual gala, let your donors get involved with you right now. They still love you. They still love the constituency that you support. They still care about it. They care about it even more now because they understand the need is so acute we should do a virtual gala. And the virtual gala team, we're here to help you with this. We are, many of you, we've been working with for many years on your in-person live galas. We've helped you with your fundraising. We have a good relationship with you. You had an event, a date on the event. I'm sorry, <laughs> you had a an event scheduled for a particular date. We think you should think about just keeping that date, keeping that date with your donors, change your communication strategy, explain to them that you're now going to do a virtual event and they will understand because they're going through it right now with you. There is no better time to do a virtual gala than right now and we would love to help you do it.